and we in it to win it. Well, hello, friends. Wolf Gore here, a.k.a. Eric Bonet. And uh, coming at you from the cabin, I've got an old goth shirt on. I always wear the same, like, three shirts in these vlogs. And I was like, man, I need to get some new outfits together. And, like, I got hella clothes. I just don't wear most of them. So I was like, let's try this on with uh, with some white shorts and do a little little black on white, and I'm, I'm actually very happy with it. But anyways, I am back, and I also wore this shirt, so I could show you this. I don't know why I'm changing the lighting. I already found the good lighting. This is my new tattoo. Let's keep the old nippy nip out of the shot. <sighs> Isn't that cool? It says uh, wolf pack backwards. Uh, it does not say wolf gore, to be clear. I did not get my own handle tat tattooed on me. Um, it says wolf pack, and the wolf pack is just my boy's. It's a group of us. Four of us got tattooed, but there are more of us in the group. But uh, four of us did, and it was really, really good. That was for the wedding that just went down, um, gosh, almost a month ago now, actually. That's crazy how fast time flies. But yeah, things have actually settled down since the last vlog, which I'm very happy to report. Maybe not globally, but in my life, at least, things have relaxed, and I've taken on some positive new habits that are making my life even better. But the wedding is over. It's been almost a month now, which is crazy. It feels like it just happened yesterday. And uh, the family dramas that I was alluding to in the last vlog have been uh, not, I wouldn't say concluded, but they, they are improving. They're moving in the right direction. Things are good. And that's all I'll say about that to protect people's privacy. But things are really good with the book. I am on chapter 56 right now, and that is about 85 to 90% of the way through. I think we're probably around 260, 260 plus pages in the Google document. I wish I would have actually looked at some of the mathy numbers where I'm at. I'm just going off memory right now, but yeah, we're doing really good. We're probably around approaching 150,000 words, maybe 135,000, something like that. So the book is big, but it's almost done. It's going to be right around 150,000, maybe a little more. And I am super happy with that length. I think it's awesome. I love the way it's shaping up. I still have a lot of work to do. Go back to the beginning and fix up like parts one and two, because I was just learning how to write. But with the skills that I have now, like I love writing. It is so much fun. And like the pages are actually coming out pretty good first try now. Like I don't need to go over them three or four times to get them to a point where I'm happy. It's like, that's decent writing. Like that's, that's pretty enjoyable to read. And I just wrote it and I'm just having a fucking blast. The characters are all developing so well. We've had some really cool action scenes that just kind of break away from like the overall kind of positive, fun, lighthearted vibe of the book and just really get into just some like badass, intense, combat stuff and it's so fun to write it's super fun to read i'm i just had a wonderful time writing those sections i had the most amazing day like the climactic ultimate battle at the end of the book um that you know it's not like plot defining but it's a big battle for to to kick off book one with a bang it is the crescendo of book one and i wrote 10 Google document pages in one sitting while writing that because I was having so much fun. And to give you context in like paperback pages, that's about 25. It was a long day of writing, but I didn't want to stop. I was sincerely having so much fun. I wrote two and a half chapters in one fucking sitting. I love writing combat and I also love writing romance. I just like, there's been flirty, fun, like stuff throughout the book, but not nothing with like any meat to it, you know? Well, we got some meat, and it was super, super fun to write. Like, oh my gosh, I just felt like, like the whole time, like, oh, this is so, this is so fun. Like, because I loved those scenes in books growing up. Like in Harry Potter in particular, like the, I always remembered the scenes with like Cho Chang, um, where, you know, Harry's like flirting with her and like asking her to the Yule Ball and like, they have, they had all these scenes where like stuff happens. I think there was one where they even kiss and stuff. And I remember just being like, oh my God, he's going to kiss her. And just going nuts over those scenes when I gr was growing up. Like, I love that. And in other books too, like the Harry Potter are the most memorable because I read them the most. But, you know, in every like coming of age story, there's always like the girl or sometimes more than one that like the young guy is flirting with, um, at least in the books that I read, and finally like gets together with, and sometimes they don't, and it's heartbreaking, but I always loved the romance stuff in a good coming-of-age story. It, I'm sure it's not for everybody, but it, it's always been for me. And getting to write those scenes myself 
for uh for a young deserving gentleman like William Witchbane has been such an honor and that probably sounds like a weird thing to say but it's like I just know that like I've been spending the past five and a half months thinking about these characters constantly and watching them develop and it honestly kind of feels like I know them in a way like it doesn't feel like they know me but it feels like I know them and it's it's a very personal and intimate relationship it almost I want to say it feels like I had kids, but I don't have kids, so I'm sure that's not what it actually feels like. But, it, you know, maybe maybe just give me a little bit, like, I made them, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and and they're very, very special to me. And it's been such a good time to write this book, and I can't wait to write book two. I know how book one is going to end. I know how book two is going to start. I know probably the first third of book two. I don't know exactly where the plot is going. I know where the long-term plot is going, but the smaller arc that is book two in its entirety or in itself, um, I don't know exactly yet, but I can't wait to find out, you know? I can't wait to find out for all of them. This has been such, such, such a cool process. I love writing. I really hope I can get this thing pu published and uh, do this full time soon because I really, really want to. <laughs> Related to writing stuff, waking up at 5 a.m. is a thing in my life now. Yep, yep, you told me about that. Well, one of you did. <laughs> my best bud has been on my butt uh, to start trying to wake up at 5 a.m. Because I guess he likes it. He thinks it's just the, the bee's knees, just the way to live your life. And I've been like, ah, that sounds fucking terrible. Like when my alarm goes off at 5 a.m., I feel like a ghoul. I'm like, Ugh, no, I'll be up in a few hours. Shut off the light. But yeah, I've always hated waking up early. I am very, very, very much, if left to my own devices, a night owl. I will stay up till two, three, four in the morning every night, sleep in till God knows when. Uh, it, this is not like my thing and it never has been. But I'm like, I told him I would try it. And it's like, I'm trying to do like harder, better things to make myself a better author just to like, make this thing happen because I really want it to happen. Um, and I was like, I got to at least try it. I got to, you know, I trust the man. Let's give it a try. So boom, set my alarm for 5am. Boom. I'm up. I'm out of bed. I don't hang out in bed. I don't sit around grumbling. Like maybe for like 15 seconds on the first day, it was kind of like, Oh fuck. Am I really doing this? And then I got up. And as soon as I got up, the tiredness went away. As soon as I stopped moving. Oh, it was right there. It was like right on top of me. But as long as I was doing stuff, it was like, okay, I'm good. I can do this. Climb downstairs, get the coffee going, you know, moving around, doing some stretches. Started doing jumping jacks this week. It's even better. I'm going to stop shaking the camera around now. You know what jumping jacks would look like, I think, maybe. Anyways, and you know what I found? You know what I found? I found that once that coffee got into my system, about 15 minutes after getting up, I wasn't tired anymore. I could even sit down without being tired. Apparently, coffee does actually work. Who knew? So I've been doing that every weekday since. I'm using the weekends as a chance to sleep in and catch up. And it's very weird to be at a point in my life where sleeping until 8 o'clock in the morning is sleeping in. It's like, am I a boomer? Like, what happened? <laughs> but what I will say is that this is the way to live. Whilst I do have to deal with tiredness in small doses and now on friday i can feel it catching up with me and i know i need to sleep in tomorrow like i can tell my eyes are a little dark but other than that you know the majority of the week it's been a very comfortable relatively easy to do process and what it has brought to my life oh my god like writing has been a freaking dream in the mornings it is dead quiet i have all of my energy left. None of it burned up on work. I'm not in a bad mood. There's nothing on my mind. There are no songs stuck in my head. There is nothing distracting me because it is the first thing that I'm doing in the morning with obvious exceptions, like, you know, making a cup of coffee, jumping jacks. But it's like I sit down and I have all of my resources available. It is the best hours of my day because I haven't used up any of my daily resources yet. It's like my stamina bar is still 100% full. And then the coffee buzz kicks in and it pushes my stamina bar up like 20%. I'm like right there, just in a great spot. And I never really realized that I'm never using the first caffeine buzz of the day for any kind of potential. Like it's, it doesn't usually even kick in until I'm driving to work. And it's like, 
that just gives me anxiety because I don't want a caffeine buzz while I'm driving. I want a caffeine buzz while I'm focusing on something. And it's like actually using it, I now appreciate the power of caffeine and like how useful of a tool it is. The problem that I've always had with caffeine is that when I try and use it in situations like this, it's always at the end of the day, I'm tired and I'm putting caffeine on top of caffeine on top of caffeine. And it's like, I've already got the best one I'm gonna get that morning when I was driving to work. But now I'm using it at the right time of day and it's oh, so, 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 so satisfying. And also, I'm going to be trying to sell you on this for a while because this has literally been like the best thing ever. Um, waking up early, it puts, it solves a problem that I was having, which is it puts a barrier between my passion and my free time. And what I was doing is going to work and I would come home and I would have to choose between following my passion or playing video games. And I'm already exhausted and in a bad mood at this point. And the things would play tug of war with each other. They wouldn't play nice because my heart's going in one direction, my brain's going in the other or whatever. You know, you get what I'm trying to say. So what I did was I stopped playing video games. And while that was a definitely a positive change in my life, when something like Elden Ring comes out, it's like you want to be a part of the game. You know, you want to get that, that experience. You know, this is like when Skyrim came out, like this is just one of those special games that like you, everybody needs to play and you only get to be part of that launch magic once, you know, you can't recreate that. So I'm like, technically, I haven't finished the book yet, but I really want to jump into Elden Ring. And I did like four or five days ago. Um, but I'm almost done with the book. I know I'm not going to get distracted and not finish. And things are better than ever. And it works because there's now a barrier between my writing time and in the morning, I don't feel like playing El Elden Ring or playing video games at all. I feel like writing. And it's great. I don't have to be distracted by it. I don't have to want it. It's just not there. And then I go to work and I do my work day and my most important things for the day are already done. So I'm in a better mood at work. I'm more willing to stay late without getting grumpy because I don't need to get home with some energy left to write. So I stay late at work. Then I get home. I'm tired. I'm still in a good mood. And it's like, hey, let's play some Elden Ring. And I play some Elden Ring or I get chores done first or, you know, whatever. <laughs> But I am having a great time with it, and I'm really loving the game. It's fucking hard, by the way. Granted, I'm doing something really stupid. Uh, I, I picked a, a Waste of Skin character, which is the only class that starts at level 1 and has perfectly distributed stats, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, all the way down the board. And before I move on to 12, I have to get everything to 11. And before I move on to 13, I have to get everything to 12. So I'm playing it in a really uh challenge mode way but it's cool it's giving me access to everything that the game has to offer all the spells all the miracles pyromancy the basic magic stuff dexterity strength stuff so i'm trying to like utilize the all the stats as best i can so i'm going for like a strength dex hybrid build with a halberd i'm almost at a weight point where i can start incorporating a shield but i've never really liked the shield gameplay um but maybe I'll get used to it at some point. I don't know. And then I've got, I bought like every spell available up till this point. And I just got my golden scarab, which was so fucking hard. Holy shit. Those boss, that hidden boss is a nightmare. Uh, but I wanted the golden scarab so I could farm more efficiently so I could get some damn stats. So my character <laughs> isn't quite so behind anymore. Um, yeah, sorry. I don't have any Elden Ring footage, but <sighs> that game is amazing. Everybody needs to play it. And being able to play it, but not having it be a distraction to my passion is coming back to the point. Perfect. It's exactly what I want. I want to be able to enjoy myself and I want to be able to follow my passion. And I don't want those two things to clash with each other. And waking up at 5 a.m. is the solution to that problem. And it feels so damn good. I've been meaning to mention in these vlogs for a while, just for posterity's sake, because half the reason I make these is for myself, so I can go back and watch them in the future and be like, oh my god, right? Like, it's super fun. Um, but something that I've been doing, and I don't think I've mentioned this in a vlog yet, is that I haven't read or listened to a book since I started writing. And that's because I don't want any other stories influencing me while I'm writing. I want it to be all me. And I can't stop, you know, getting inspiration from books that I've already read. Obviously, that's just say la vie. But, you know, and every author gets inspiration from other authors. It's just part of how the industry works. But yeah, I haven't read a book in like six months. 
and I am so close to finishing. Uh, we've got l less than a month left of writing at the pace that I'm going, definitely. Maybe two to three weeks, tentatively speaking. It depends on how the weekends go, even though my weekends are getting a little bit fuller. Um, that's okay if it takes a week longer. You know, that's fine. The point is, I'm almost done, and I can finally read a book. Do you know how hard it's been to start writing your first book ever and discover that it's your passion and it's what you want to do every moment for the rest of your life and not let yourself read any books. It's been super hard, but I think it was the right call because I know that when I dig into a book, my brain is going to start connecting with the various elements of that book and be like, Oh, I want to include that. But by not doing that, I think it's probably changed the vibe of the book, and it was worth it. It's been worth it. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't want to do it again. I don't want to do it for book two. I might. I don't know. I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can. I miss reading so much. All I want to do is just shove audio books all over my face and just like chew on them and just, just snort a line of book. Just grind it up and snort it. <sighs> But yeah, uh, on my list is H.P. Uh, Lovecraft. I want to know what is the deal with H.P. Lovecraft. Like, I think Cthulhu is cool. I think every everything that I've experienced that I've heard, oh, H.P. Lovecraft clearly inspired this thing, like Bloodborne. I always love those things. Like, I, I love, I guess, whatever his vibe was. So I want to read the man himself, and I bought an H.P. Lovecraft compilation book. So I'm going to check that out, and that'll be good, I'm hoping. We'll see. I've also got Game of Thrones on the list. I have the audiobooks downloaded, and uh, I've been wanting to read those for a long time. But we'll see. If they didn't capture me the first time I tried, but I think I'll be able to appreciate them better now after having read a book. Read a book? I've read a couple books. Written a book. I think I'll be able to appreciate them better now after I have written a couple books. And then the one other thing, who was that? Oh, and I would also like to read some Stephen King. If you have any suggestions on Stephen King in particular, please let me know down below. I'm kind of thinking about The Dark Tower, although I hear the first one was really good because he, like, wrote it while he was in college, and then he, like, finished the series many years later, and, like, two through eight, I think, weren't as good. Um, but let me know if that's true or not, because I, I would love to know, like, what's The King about? Like, what's his writing style? I love the movies made about his stories, like It. So good and other ones too, but Misery, Misery was really good, The Shining, super good, but yeah, if you have any Stephen King book suggestions, please leave them below, I would love to check it out and learn from your knowledge banks. Was there anything else? I know, I know, as soon as I end this video, I'm gonna go, damn it, there was that thing I wanted to talk about, then I'll have to write it down and try and do it in the next one, but why don't we take a look at downstairs, because I am looking at the timer and it says I've been recording for 21 minutes so it's probably a good time to wrap this up so let's look in here I got a stick this is my stick it's a walking stick and I walk with it and it's nice when I go on forest walks to have a stick with me makes me feel brave uh, I also didn't tidy up down here like I told myself I was going to so um, don't judge me. Um, little kitchen, cabinets, that kind of thing. Little two burner, gas stove, little sink, little fruit bowl, hot sauce collection. There it is. Told you I was going to show it. <laughs> uh, got some nice white cabinets. They look great if I had, you know, good stuff to display in them, which I kind of don't. Um, we've got all exposed beams above us. Pretty freaking gorgeous. Pretty gorge. Uh, we've got a little chair where I put my boots on in the morning, and this is the writing desk where when I need a little extra kick in the ass for the day, I'll come and sit right there under the stairs because it hurts my back, and for some reason that makes me a better writer. Uh, don't ask me why. guess I'm just a masochist on some level. Yep, that's the writing desk. Chair number one. This is, this is the light sitting chair. You know, just for a bit of light sitting, not when you're trying to sit heavily. It's a recliner. It's got 
a foot rest that I'm not going to turn the camera around to show you. That's chair number one. The upholstery is a little old because it is like a vintage chair, but I'd like to get the upholstery redone with like something nice one day. This is the big old squishy boy. This is the only one I actually paid for. And I don't know if it's my favorite. The one thing I like about it is that it has actual neck support. It's not as comfortable as it looks. It's not a great chair, but it's a decent chair. And this one I actually got for free as well, and it's pretty damn comfortable. It's a little bit firmer, and I'm not a young man anymore, so it's nice to have a firmer chair. I got this ottoman that I turned out to not need because all the chairs have footrests of their own. So I don't know what I'm going to do with that other than use it for storage. That's some little chairs and a fan. This section hasn't been filled out yet. It's still just kind of, kind of just stuff right there. And I built this the other day. This is a DVD rack made with steel cables and little hooky doos. Um, can I get close? Can you see that okay? Yeah, you know those little hook things? Yeah, well I mounted like four of those in wood and then ran some steel cables between. So there's four steel cables, three that sit under the DVDs and one that sits in front of them. And then the back side of the DVDs rests against these beams. So I made a little bookshelf and I'd like to start collecting paperback books. So uh, if you're looking for something cool to send me, not that you would want to send me anything. I have a PO box. If you want to send me stuff, I love getting stuff, but paperback books would be a really cool thing that I would like to start collecting. So just putting that out there, but yeah, I made that. And then I've got my old wall tapestries that are now being used as kind of makeshift window curtains because I don't have like $300 to put nice window curtains all around this place right now. Oh, and I got a big ass TV. 65 inch curved screen. It's sitting on top of the old beer pong table with the souls of its many, many victims. Not the TV, the table. And yeah, it's nice. I got it, you know, used for cheap. So normally I wouldn't treat myself to something like that. Um, but when you can get it used and cheap, it's like, hey, if I ever need the money, I can at least get my monies back or flip it for a little bit more. So that's nice. And oh, I also got this radio thing. This is cool except it's not. You see this radio? Yeah, cool, like vintage, I don't know, vintage 70s maybe? Or at least it tried to be, but it's pretty cool. It hooks up to Bluetooth really well and it's got a good speaker. Um, but this like plastic piece, you probably can't see it very well, but it like bubbled outwards. So now it's not like smooth, it's like whoop. And it's like, oh, I don't wanna send it back to Amazon and get a new one. Like, I'm way too lazy for that shit. Like, I got a lot going on, but I think I'm just going to live with it. But anyways, the it it was cool. It's a little bit less cool now. But anyways, uh, yeah, that's the downstairs tour. I have been recording for a really long time, so I'm going to call it a day. I love you guys. A beard heart. Thank you so much for watching. Next time we record one of these, there's probably going to be a finished book in my computer. Probably not in my hand because turning it into a physical object is going to require a lot of steps and costs and effort. Anyways, I love you. I'll see you next time. Bye.